Thank you, Governor, for being here in the studio today. Thank you, Laura. I'm delighted to be here. So I have so many questions for you, but environmental issues just don't get the attention they tend to deserve. So even though I want to hear about COVID and reproductive rights and some social issues, we're sticking to the environment today. Perfect. Uh, given the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, I think it's on the mind of so many Americans and certainly so many New Mexicans and leadership in Western states. Yeah. yeah. So um, this year's fires kind of jumping up to northern New Mexico after Hermit's Peak and Calf Canyon, the Forest Service is supposed to be releasing a review of their prescribed fire protocols. And that might actually even come out um, this week before this airs, um, what do you know about their plans or their conversations about prescribed fire? Well, what they what they committed to. So we'll see if it's in this um, actual presentation to us about a plan, which is this notion that they don't adopt their prescribed burns, forest management, or forest health reviews in this new extreme drought environment, and provide no notice to states about taking fuel, particularly through prescribed burns, out of the forest uh, is problematic, as we saw, right? It was both fires, both caused uh, by negligence, frankly, gross negligence of the federal government. So my expectation is, true to their word, that notice requirements are in, that collaboration requirements about what constitutes getting the fuel out, and that while I think there's a group of New Mexicans who have little tolerance forever doing prescribed burns. I think the notion given the vast acreage we're talking about in all of our national forests across the country, that that may be an unrealistic effort, particularly when you look at some of the terrain. But uh, in the spring uh, and windy seasons, and frankly, in the heat of the summer when the temperature is so high and there's no humidity, we're expecting it to be very weather-centric, so winter, and we're expecting, uh, like I said, ex you know, very specific notice. And then we want to be part of the science. You know, what would constitute the parameters? And then what states go and in what order and how? Uh, and I'm expecting that at the very least. But they have a lot of climate change work in order to catch up to the reality of today uh, across the globe and certainly in their work as a federal uh, entity m responsible for forest health. Yeah, and do you feel like the federal government has been responsive and transparent when it comes to the fires, the recovery? Uh, you know, transparency's uh, tough uh, because uh, it is when folks get frustrated uh, for government for any reason, uh, I share that frustration, but government by its nature is sort of a large, can be an unwieldy sort of organization and nothing more unwieldy than maybe the Pentagon uh, in and of itself, and then the federal government uh, as a whole. So they were clear, they took responsibility. The president said unequivocally to America and to New Mexicans, our fault, we will do everything uh, to fix it and uh, expect more from us. That's happening, but it is an institution that doesn't work well with being flexible and on the ground in a meaningful way. If you're a New Mexican and primarily if you're living in the areas affected, so let's just focus on Mora County, but that's not the only county affected, but they have been literally, I think the technical word, hammered by these floods. It is a slow, arduous, and by design, find a way for you not to be eligible for a program, not the reverse. And that has been incredibly frustrating and mind numbing. I had a report today and uh, they're clear that I'm not happy I'm not happy about the lack of immediacy. So this is where the state, uh, and you'll see us, we've been purchasing and uh, buying uh, livestock feed and you know getting food and we're looking at getting wood and temporary housing because if we wait for FEMA or there are other programs, it'll be several years and that's untenable. And I need the Senate to act on legislation that's in front of them because this allows us to sort of ignore to some degree these arduous processes and to jumpstart recovery in the state. So it's both. They've taken responsibility. They're, they're on the ground still. I have 300 people from FEMA alone on the ground here. But it should translate, in my view, to a lot more debris removal and a whole lot more help for New Mexicans. So they're gonna, the state's going to have to come in and deliver that for them, and we will.
All right. So as governor, you have one role to play and one set of responsibilities that's separate from the federal government. But the federal government does control a lot of land in the state and, and makes a lot of decisions for us. Um, I'm thinking in particular, not just about forest management, but Holtec, this mm -hmm. private company that wants to bring the nation's commercial nuclear waste here. Um, is there a way for the state to be stopping this from happening? I believe so. Um, I want to be really clear to your viewers. Uh, it's not an easy or straightforward path. I mean, the reality is, is that the federal policymakers and the federal government knew that no state really was going to stand up and volunteer to take the most dangerous waste from all of our nuclear energy and nuclear power plants. So not just, but spent fuel rods, which I think most people are familiar. You don't want those in your backyard. And when we were doing the waste isolation pilot plant, and we were doing that in the 80s, actually I used to work there in the 80s, right out of college. I did it in Albuquerque because we were still drilling. But the whole purpose and promise was that New Mexicans would never be subjected to having no role or choice in the kinds of nuclear waste that would be disposed of at WIP. Well, fast forward to 2022, and what we have is a new federal structure that says states really don't get to decide. An independent commission gets to decide, and of course they are leaning towards deciding that New Mexico will be the recipient and that the company that they will work with to do that transport and management is a company called Holtec. So you should expect us to do the things that other states have done. Pass legislation that says never, have the attorney general already is, filing lawsuits. We do have control over permits uh, and uh, like efforts. So we are uh, poised to fight it and to really ask the federal government, here's an option that they have that they have not undertaken. Because we keep fighting about where it should go, why don't we do the research to both safely store it where it is and clean it up where it is and potentially reuse it? And given that this is a state that knows about innovation with two labs, we'd be happy to dedicate our labs to work that would make a difference around the country. It is a national issue to be responsible for. In my view, this is the best way for New Mexicans to work through this problem for the country without just being told that we have to take on something that I don't believe has the right safety standards or aspects or transparency by a company that uh, we ought to be told we have to deal with. So we're going to fight it. And um, my intention, of course, is to win, but I want New Mexicans to know it's a heavy lift because they created a system that doesn't allow me to directly say no. So we have to find other legal avenues to do that. Mm -hmm.